if there were not love between two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, if there was not a desire for cooperation, a desire for union, then there would be no water. And so when you look out here in nature, everything that you can see in physical form is the result of a congregation of atoms or molecules who desire to congregate, to cooperate, to create whatever it is in front of our eyes that is beautiful to see. Everything has its place and everything contributes to the whole. So we come to this idea of water being this amazing substance which is created fundamentally out of love. It's created out of the love for oxygen, for hydrogen. It's created out of the love of mother substances which are carbons and minerals and all those trace elements all combine in water to produce this life elixir which if it is high quality will endow us with extraordinary energy and longevity. So how do we get back to this water? What does this wonderful substance do for us? How can we treat it? How can we store it? Well, water, juvenile water, young water is born in the forest and as it gradually comes to the surface it gathers to itself minerals, trace elements until arriving at the surface as a spring it is mature it has its full complement of mother substances it's ready to give and one of the principal ingredients in good water is carbonic acid which is a compound of hydrogen, carbon and oxygen and when you put a glass of very good quality water out in the sun and you let it stand in the sun then eventually you'll see some little bubbles form on the inside of the glass as the water heats up and that is the conversion of carbonic acid into carbon dioxide and all these little bubbles coming out represent the carbon dioxide coming out of the water represent the body of the water, the good taste of the water coming out of it and it also represents an enormous energy loss and so many of our systems of reticulation today are designed merely from the point of view that water is a fluid that it has no life and so it doesn't matter which way you treat it so we make it flow down straight channels we make it flow into cylindrical objects we make it flow into all sorts of vessels and shapes which are nowhere to be found in nature and we don't perceive even with so many spiral formations and spiral movements around us I mean in terms of the spiral motion of the galaxies in terms of the spiral movement of cyclones tornadoes and so on all these spirals are there everywhere and we don't see that nature has chosen these shapes because they represent those artifacts, those formations which follow her laws of constant change because the only thing which is constant in nature is change and if we want to create a system for water reticulation then we must also create within the forms that we provide the possibility for water to change and transform and to renew itself. Victor Schauberger, born in Austria in 1885, was descended from a long line of foresters and conservators of the forest and in his blood he therefore had an enormous amount of information inherited so to speak genetically from his forebears and the family motto was have faith in the silent forest he as a young man spent most of his time in the forest and there he was able to perceive phenomena, energetic phenomena in nature in untouched virgin forest which gave him so many insights into 
the way nature functions and particularly with regard to water. He says that he used to sit beside a flowing stream and was never bored for a minute. He used to allow a part of his consciousness to flow away with the water and when it was returned to him finally the water psyche revealed many secrets to him so in a sense he was able to send his consciousness to those places the eyes couldn't see and in returning with information it confirmed or further developed the theories that he had on water. Throughout his whole life he was an unconventional person in terms of contemporary physics or science and he had a long and running battle with scientists, often acrimonious, because those things that he said were the realities were usually in stark conflict with accepted theory at the time. And fundamentally this revolves around water and the way water should be viewed and what is important for water to maintain its inner health and vitality. And what is water? Well, water, in Victor Schauberger's view, is a living substance. And whether it has life or death depends on the way it 